So this year in Monterey Bay, uh, we started with pretty normal spring conditions. And in about May of the year, uh, we started to see a bloom of this diatom, Pseudonychia. And that happens pretty much every year. It's a normal part of the, the community. But this diatom under the right conditions produces a toxin called domoic acid. And so it started to come up in about May and it just bloomed into this massive, massive event. It's probably the largest event we've seen in 15 years in terms of the, the spatial extent of where this organism is and the levels of toxin. And then talking to some colleagues, what we've discovered is that the, this one bloom is actually extended from Santa Barbara to the south of us all the way up into Alaska. And so it truly is an unprecedented event. So domoic acid, it's, it's a problem because it gets into the food web. And so it's an, an amino acid, it's just a compound that's being made by the phytoplankton. But when it gets into uh, mammals, including humans or birds, it basically overexcites your nervous system. Animals are mostly getting it from eating some animal that has a lot of the toxin. And so eating uh, shellfish, eating anchovies, something like that. So in California, we have a six month annual quarantine where they tell you not to harvest shellfish. And for the commercial growers, they test it very rigorously. And so even though it's causing lots of problems for pelicans and sea lions and fish, basically it's almost impossible for a human to get sick from it as long as you're purchasing commercially bought shellfish or commercially bought fish because they test it really, really, really carefully. Really the only way you're gonna get exposed to it is essentially if you're harvesting illegally, if you're going down and getting shellfish when you're not supposed to be, that would be a way to get the toxin. And, and obviously most people don't do that. So, so these blooms normally, they'll, they'll last uh, a couple weeks to a month. And so this bloom started in about the beginning of May. We would normally expect it to be finishing by the end of May or beginning of June. And we're now going on our, our second month and, and the bloom has kind of waxed and waned. It's gotten bigger and smaller but it ha certainly hasn't gone away. And that's very unusual. You know, it's, the toxin levels are about the highest we've seen in 15 years. And the length of the bloom is also about one of the longest blooms already that we've seen in the last 15 years. And so what's been kind of unusual about this year is we've had really warm water that started out in the central Pacific and it's sort of collapsed up against the, the coastline. And so it's been referred to as the warm blob by the NOAA researchers. Those are just the absolute perfect conditions for this organism and it showed up along the whole west coast basically at once. So fortunately for us, we've had this five-year program funded by uh, the NOAA ECOHAB program, where ECOHAB is the ecology and oceanography of harmful algal blooms, and we've basically been waiting for a bloom like this. And so we put all our instruments out in the water at the beginning of May, and we had uh, underwater molecular biology labs that basically run themselves. We have these gliders that are flying through the water and sending us information back. We've been going out on the boat pretty much every other day to, to track the bloom. And so we were really prepared and, and we're actually, from a scientific perspective, we're, we're happy to see this because this is the data we need to actually predict what's going on. Beyond that, because it's such a large bloom and it has the potential to impact both wildlife and humans, we've been working very closely with California Department of Public Health, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and some of the other NOAA labs to really uh, figure out where the toxin is, where the bloom is, how it's moving through the food web. And so it was actually our lab that we first identified the really high levels in anchovy, told the state, the state then tested to verify, and immediately after that they closed the commercial fishing for anchovy because the, the anchovy had gotten so toxic.